All right, welcome to Mike's Motor Works, and on this episode, we're catching part two on mounting the 73 Barracuda on our chassis jig. You don't want to miss this. At this point, we already have our square base done for our jig. And you've seen the video on uh, how we got here and what the base design is. Now, today what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on getting the vehicle onto the jig so that it doesn't twist or uh, distort the body as we start taking off the panels. Again, this is a unibody car. A standard rotisserie wasn't gonna do the job here because we're gonna be getting a little bit into the structure and I don't want anything to move. I want this thing as straight as it can be. Our jig right now stands at its base square. Now, because of the thickness of the material, I decided not to run the uh, riggers going diagonally across. There was plenty of support by only running the six inches from top to bottom, from that top uh, rail to the bottom rail. And with the squares being where they are, it gave us plenty of support, plenty of rigidity. You've seen the base design on episode one. So now what we have is we have the 73, we pulled it down this morning to dad shop. And uh, our task for the next uh, few bits are to get this onto this at key mounting points where the vehicle will not shift. So let me show you where these key mounting points are going to be. All right, key mounting point number one. Our first key mounting point, we have a couple of different options. Mounting point number one is either going to be right in this area where you mount to the side and underneath here, or we'll go under where the basic control assembly goes and what have you. Um, so that's one of our possible points, but more than likely we're going to go right here for uh, far forward as possible. Then underneath here, what we're going to do is if you look back all the way into this focal point area here, we have our main cross support. That is also a key lifting point for the vehicle. So we are going to go ahead and build something to keep it supported there. Now, if you notice those little holes that are appearing, those appearing there, those are for um, frame jigs and such. And so we're going to have to go in there with a dowel to match those and line those up and uh, that will also be our key points there. So we'll have a key point up front and a key point in the center here. We are not going to be messing with these structures here, the main frame. Those are all in great shape, and I feel confident we can attack the project with leaving those intact and just doing some simple uh, wire brushing, de-rusting, and painting. In the back here, it becomes a little bit trickier. This is the back, so this is where the uh, front leaf support goes and uh, there is some good bracing there and as you can see we got a little bit of Swiss cheese that we'll take care of that's from the, the uh, rear seat pan and we also got some mounting holes here okay that will also come into play but we have this area here in which we'll build that support more than likely heading up to the uh, center line right there all right and then following the frame all the way back we have our rear leaf shackle mounts. All right, so there's a hole there that we could take advantage of and a hole up here we could take advantage of where a bolt would run through. So those are going to be our key areas. The trick is, is we want to keep this car aligned so that it doesn't move or shift or is built out of alignment.
Right now, we are getting some more square tube cut, and we've ensured that all four sides are level. Alrighty, and as you can see here, if you're looking at that bubble there, if I get this thing to focus in, and we've went ahead and locked the four corners, leveling feet, in place. We ensured that we were level on this axis. I ensured it was level in the front and on the side. So now we are ready to start mounting. So to put our braces on the back of the car, we have cut this beam. And this is going to go where the rear leaf shackle goes, the last or second to last bolt, right above the uh, uh, bushing back there. And this is exactly 50 inches long. And um, of course, we're going to mount bolt there and bolt here on the sides. And uh, then we'll run the square tube up to that, and that'll take care of the very, very back support. <laughs> So at this point, we got the rear section in place. Here's the other well there. Of course, it's welded on the other corners. Um, still working on my um, welds on the uh, angles there, but my flats are pretty good. I'm just gotta figure out a little secret trick to that. But that is now bolted in place. So the rear section is set. Now we gotta do the front section and then we can do the two middle supports. So to handle the front support, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a um, bracket using the bumper support holes here. We're gonna run a bracket down and then we're gonna run a bar across and then attach those like we did the back. So we're doing the same kind of T structure. So uh, we'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. With our front part in place here, you can see here we ran the uh, bolt through the uh, bumper support to run it across here to kind of make like a uh, little T or pie sign, if you will. And uh, we're just gonna run the support pars to the bottom and that'll take care of the front. Where things stand now, we now have the uh, bar here in the front completely in place. And uh, notice the angle's a little different because we went ahead and put the car on the lift. And of course, we got extra supports now to keep it from bowing too much. And we're now working on the midpoint areas. And what we've decided to do was in the, you know, this is the torsion where the cross member is, where the torsion bars go through. So what we'll do is we're gonna run a tube between here and here, right? And then downwards. And we're gonna run dowels up into our um, alignment pegs, okay? Our alignment holes. And that should help keep things in line there. Looking at the back, and this is right underneath the wheel well here, the rear wheel well. And what we'll do is, is right in these areas over here, we're gonna run um, a, basically a bar back to back here and then down to the jig itself. And uh, the holes, the alignment holes there, are one inch round. So we haven't decided if we're gonna use round bar or if we're just gonna go get a um, one inch wide bolt and nut assembly. We gotta figure that part out. But I do have some round bar coming. And of course, they'll need to be cleaned up a little bit before we get it all up in there. And there was a little bit of sag, I guess, because of time and what have you, which happens as the cars deteriorate you can see a lot of the structure is gone or what have you. So because of the sag, uh, we're gonna have to lift up the other side by about an eighth of an inch to keep the vehicle square as I start working on it. So as promised, here's a little update on how things are going. And right now this is just in its mock-up phase, but you can see here we are on the main crossbar. That's where the torsion bars go through, etc. So we have a little round bar that will go right up into the hole here. And then of course, we have this holding the weight. The idea is to keep everything from shifting using the frame alignment holes, which are sometimes used by, um, uh, in the event of an accident, you know, they would pull the car back into shape or pull the frame back into shape. So that's how it works. Again, same thing back here. 
We got the alignment hole ready, lined up right here. Again, this is just in its mock-up phase, all right? We, uh, the load bearing part will be right here. And it's a little bit off, as you can see here, and that's just per design. Um, we're confident that once we get everything welded up, it'll be fine and hold its shape. Again, the idea here is to keep this back part from moving. This is gonna be a primary load bearing point. When I take out this area here, that's gonna put a lot of possible binding uh, on the assembly. So we have to rely on this area here to keep everything lined up and supported for the rear frame rails. Here we got a little sneak peek of the mistakes that I've made in the past. And uh, yeah, I've clearly learned from those mistakes, did some homework, did some studies, and I'm ready to tackle this project um, with a whole lot more confidence and knowledge. So here's how things turned out. As you can see, we are supported by the uh, rear leaf shackle area. We are reinforced as needed here. We move forward up a little bit. And we can see here that we are welded in place. If I get the light on there, there we go. We are welded in place and we have our dowel in there, our dowel and uh, or our pin if you will and so those are on there and yeah i think my welding improved a little bit as time moved forward and as you can see here we are again secured in that hole with that dowel pin and uh, we are keeping that uh, cross member in place and then of course up here a little dip there in my weld there but hey that's all right just fell off track a little bit uh, we are reinforced, and now that things are pretty much ready, said, and done, and good to go, we're going to give this thing a coat of Tractor Yellow. It's an oil-based paint to keep this thing from rusting out too much, uh, you know, so for various reasons, we don't want this thing to rust out because we put a lot of time and there's a lot of money invested here and uh, might be able to use this for the next project because we do have that 72 that needs some love and i might go a different direction with that 72 than with uh the project fast fish here but uh, as time moves forward we'll get that figured out and uh, we'll make that a secondary project so that is it ladies and gentlemen we are good to go yeah the big project can start and uh First thing we're gonna replace is all the floorboards. So that'll be our next bit that we take on with Project Fast Fish. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe button and uh, check and follow us and keep up to date on the latest here on Mike's Motorworks and on Project Fast Fish.